Hi, welcome to Tessera's Nerf Room. This is the Tesseract, quite possibly the coolest thing I've ever made in my entire life. So just in case, really quick, you are thinking that this is just a Strife Cosmetic mod. It's a little bit more interesting than just that, and I'm not going to pretend like this is one of the most revolutionary things on the planet. It is just a basic budget Strife mod, but for me, that's a pretty big deal because I've never modified a flywheel blaster before, and this turned out way better than I could have ever dreamed. So I'm just going to review this blaster like normal, and then after I'm done with the main like review part of the video, I'm going to tell you guys about what's inside of here, and why this thing is so freakishly cool, and also why it made my bank account very sad. First of all, starting with the design, as you can probably imagine, I am heavily biased in favor of this just because I made the design myself. I took a Chris Vector kit and painted a stripe green, and then added a ton of silver details all over it. On top of that, the worker lightweight stock and cheek rest really do it justice to make this thing look like a CQB beast. And it feels like a CQB beast. This blaster is actually very compact and efficient considering the fact that it is, it is huge. It is like rapid strike sizes. And I did slightly different designs on both sides. So as you can see, I have an out of darts extended battery door, which I painted the details in silver and I just colored in the word strife on this side. But on the other side, I wrote Tesseract on it because that's the name of the blaster. And because there's such a big empty space here, I thought I needed to fill it with something. Why not put the name of the blaster? If we go on to the ergonomics, again, I am very biased here because I really like the stripes grip. I think that the stripes grip is way better on something like this that is really designed as a primary rather than the smaller pistol style blaster that the stripe traditionally is. I think that the stripe grip is very good on the rapid strike and it feels very good on the tesseract because there's just more for you to hold on to here. As for the foregrip, the worker vector kit just feels really, really good. There's not much I can say here. And for the stock, the worker lightweight stock mixed with the cheek rest is actually a very nice combination, leading to all the ergo on this blaster feeling super good. If there is only one thing that I would prefer, it is the fact that the stock is a little bit short. But again, this blaster is designed to be CQB oriented, and the length of the stock is actually pretty good for a CQB blaster like this, especially if you're going to be using the foregrip. Also, one kind of extra note, this small space of plastic right here is perfect for your thumb to go when you're holding the foregrip, which just ended up working out really well. I wasn't even expecting that to work, but it worked flawlessly. As for the triggers here, basically everything has been changed. The rev trigger has been changed to a Bobololo style trigger, and inside is an Amaron micro switch, which makes it super clicky and very nice. It feels really wonderful, and also, yes, the blaster is incredibly loud. As for the mag release, I have a worker kind of extended mag release here, which is designed for the swordfish, which is why it's transparent, but I tried to paint it black and it didn't really work. It kind of ended up being like this translucent thing, but honestly, it works just fine, and I like this way more than the Strife's original mag release. As for the main trigger, it has been heavily lubricated to be quite a bit more smooth than the original Strife trigger was, and honestly, the Strife trigger was already really good. Now it's just a masterpiece. And instead of being powered by four AA batteries, Batteries, it is being powered by a Tattoo 2S LiPo, which works tremendously well and gives this thing a near instant rev up time. That is how long it takes to rev up the flywheels completely, which makes it super efficient and easy to use. The performance out of this thing is in the 120 to 130 FPS range now, which makes it perfect for HVZ, which is exactly why I made this. I wanted a nice, comfortable HVZ primary that would be easy to use in a CQB style battle. And this thing is just, it is so good. I love this thing so much. But how does it work? Well, it is still just a strife. So you put the magazine in, you rev it, and it's semi-automatic. <laughs> I love that trigger so much. Gosh, I just love doing everything with this. Loading the magazine, putting it in and pulling it out is quite a bit smoother than it originally was because not only did I slightly lubricate the inside of the magwell, but I also just loosened it a little bit and kind of stretched it out a little bit more and I have been working this mag release way too much. If any of you take anything I just said out of context, I will destroy you. It's a promise.
And unironically, a big chunk of me wants to paint like this kind of Doomlands yellowy texture on the bottom of this magazine black just so it'll blend into the blaster because good lord, that looks cool. In my opinion, that looks awesome. This is the best looking magazine I have seen in this blaster. I've been using 18 round magazines. This is the first time I've actually put this 12 rounder in the blaster and it just looks great. Holy crap, it actually works really well because of like the, oh, I just, uh, well, never mind that. So I'm going to be doing normally first and then I'm going to be spamming the trigger as hard as I can. So obviously my opinion on this is going to be very positive because I designed this myself. I, I literally built everything here all by myself, including doing all the soldering, which is the first time I've ever used a soldering iron, which went hilariously bad, and somehow this nugget actually works. I can't, I actually can't believe that this thing works at all. But I should probably explain just what is going on in the internals. So it's got Incitanto wheels and a worker metal flywheel cage version 3, which is already pretty nice in and of itself, and it's using Fang revamped motors, so that's probably why it is so fast and efficient. On top of that, I have an aluminum barrel in here, which is for some reason not perfectly aligned with the center, but I don't know. It shoots perfectly straight, and it has really good performance and really good accuracy, so I'm not going to say anything, and I'm not going to complain. On top of that, it has, again, as I said earlier, a 21 amp micro switch, and it's using 16 gauge wiring, which was admittedly kind of a pain to fit into the shell, but overall just worked pretty well. And again, it is using a 2S LiPo, so I had to hollow out the battery tray and create a gap for the wires to go through in the back. But this is my favorite part about the blaster. It has a swappable cage setup. So what I mean by that is out of Darth sells this thing called a motor spanning board. And if you solder it to the flywheel cage with the motors on it, you can essentially connect it to an XT60 connector and make it so that you can just plug the flywheel cage in and unplug it whenever you want. Which essentially means you can build modular cages for this thing and take them out and put them in as often as you please. I only have one cage for this right now and that's the one that's inside of the blaster, but holy dingus is that not an awesome concept. And I plan on making several different flywheel cages to put in this thing and take it out just to see like what is the best combination, what looks the best, what works the best, what is the most efficient, what is the most accurate, what gives it the best velocity, can I get spin on the darts? I know that candid cages are a thing, I don't know if that would work with the motor spanning board, but I don't know, that's for future me to figure out. And overall, there are just lots of things that I can experiment with here, and I am very, very excited to experiment with them. This isn't the biggest like tier zero build that you can ever imagine but honestly I'm proud of this thing because it works all I wanted was to build something that works and it actually worked and it worked better than I could have ever dreamed this thing is super comfortable super cool and works super well I would link all of the parts to build one in the description but good grief there's a lot of stuff that you have to buy to get this nugget to work. Some of the parts I don't even think they sell anymore, so it's like, I, I don't know what to tell y'all. But I can say this, if you are afraid of soldering because it's like, oh, it's, it's really hot and it's really dangerous and it's really hard and it's super easy to screw up, don't worry yourself too much because it takes about 10 minutes of practice and then you'll be able to do this. I'm, I'm being serious here because I literally only soldered one thing before I built this blaster and I did all of the soldering by myself with the help of my dad to just hold the piece still so that I could use the soldering. Like It really isn't rocket science. It's very easy to solder. But with that said, yeah. Also, yes, I got a haircut. I know you guys are going to spam that in the comments, please don't. I already know that I got a haircut. You guys have been spamming it on Discord long enough already when I showed y'all the pictures of this thing. I know my hair looks different now. Please stop! But the Tesseract has now earned its spot right here, right on the wall, back where it was before, and that looks sexy. Thank you guys for watching, and welcome back to Tessera's Nerf Room. Oh, 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 oh,